That's what we're talking about. He rose and so we'll rise. I was just at the cemetery yesterday and the day before. And uh, we know that a cemetery is not a final resting place. The Bible says, as the creed says, I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Not just Jesus, but everyone who trusts in him. What a future we have. A man and his son were in their boat out on the ocean and a big storm hit. Big massive waves sank the boat. They grabbed hold, they had their life jackets on, they grabbed hold of debris and, and tried to just stay afloat and stay together, but the waves drove them apart and pretty soon the boy disappeared from his father's view. And the dad hung on as long as he could, bone cold, weary, and just sadder than words could say about his son disappearing. And finally he went unconscious. And when he woke up, he was in a warm bed. And what a relief, he'd been saved. But that quickly turned to, to just great sorrow when he thought about his son until he turned his head and there was the boy in the bed next to him. Can you imagine what he felt right then? That's the feeling of the resurrection. That's the feeling of life all over again. That's the feeling of another chance. That's the difference that Easter makes to everyone who trusts in Christ. We know we can trust Jesus because he's alive. The Bible says he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead. The most significant event in world history is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It changed everything. That's why uh, his life defines the difference between B.C. and A.D. The, the whole of history hinges on his life, death, and resurrection. When he conquered death, he transformed life on this planet, and particularly for everyone who puts their faith in him. We can live with confidence that Christ is always with us, and we can be certain that someday we'll be with him. Well, life can be hard. You know that. We all deal with it. Car trouble, home repairs, job struggles, health issues. Close relationships can unravel. All kinds of things happen. And we often have no idea how a bad situation ever could turn around. The Apostle Paul once dealt with so many problems of such devastating depth that he reported, he said, our sufferings were so horrible and so unbearable that death seemed certain. In fact, we felt sure we were going to die. And yet God's presence was with him and God's power was working in him and around him. And Paul was later able to declare, we have set our hope on him. Our hope isn't on some circumstance changing on something coming, on some financial turn, our hope is in Jesus. Paul's faith was refined. He was strengthened as he kept trusting in God, who was faithful through all his trials. In the end, he realized, this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. I know in my own experience, when I rely on myself, it's not good. I can't pull it off. I can't make it work. But if I rely on God, things are different. And Paul became even more thankful for his heavenly father as he found renewed hope and as he was invigorated with renewed strength and moved on in victory. Think about this. Easter is like the birthday of hope. Hope came alive when Jesus rose from the dead. And every year we celebrate the birthday of hope on Easter. We celebrate what Jesus birthed with his resurrection. He rose from the dead and so the human race has proof that everything is under God's control. Everything is moving towards an exact outcome that God had in mind from the beginning. We have confidence in his ability 
to handle all the details, everything that matters to us today and in the days to come. We have solid evidence that we're in good hands because the father brought his son back to life after he was viciously murdered. Peter stood up to the Jewish authorities and said, you murdered Jesus by hanging him on a cross. But God, the God of our ancestors, brought him back to life. And again, he said, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. Do you know that the resurrection of Jesus is the best documented event of ancient history? Over 500 witnesses saw him after he rose from the dead. Many of them saw him several times, wrote down what they had seen and heard in that generation. The Gospels go back to the first generation of Jesus. There are eyewitness accounts that have been preserved carefully. There's other collaborating evidence. Christ's resurrection has been ridiculed, but it's never been disproven. There have been several uh, scholars who set out to disprove it, and every one of them failed. And many of them were converted and became followers of Jesus. Millions of people in every generation have testified that Jesus has changed their lives. He's alive. He's working. And we celebrate. The God we worship is able to raise the dead. It's easy for him. Nothing is hard for God. When God does something, nothing is hard. There's miracles. To God, there's no great miracles. They're all just what he does. And there are no limits to his power. There's no boundaries to his love. He has complete authority over the universe and he's totally trustworthy, and he deserves complete authority over us. The death of Jesus reveals that he's truly human. He's one of us. He died like we all will die. But his resurrection proves he's fully God. He can't stay dead. It's impossible. He's the source of life. And we're reminded of what happened. This morning we saw the pictures and the songs of what happened that first Easter. He defeated death. He didn't just survive. He reversed death. He allowed death to put its hold on him and then he forced it to let go. He came out of the tomb as a conqueror and he can never die again. The Bible declares we know that death no longer has any power over Christ. He died and was raised to life, never again to die. He has eternal life. He is eternal life. He gives eternal life. He passes his victory on to us. We're human. We'll die. But we belong to Jesus. And when we do, we have eternal life. And so death has no permanent hold on us. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Your true self, your soul, your spirit that was made to be in harmony with God will live forever in Christ. If we give ourselves to Christ, we have eternal life. Physical death won't be the end of us. It's temporary. Our life will continue on and we'll spend forever with him. At the cemetery yesterday, I I reminded people that in America, and most of our cemeteries, uh, the head is always to the west and the feet are to the east so that when Jesus comes back at his second coming, he's coming to Jerusalem, that's in the east, we're, we're buried in such a way that we'll sit up to face him and go to him at his coming. It's symbolic. But it's real, that it, that it will happen. He will come. We will rise. The Bible says the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. It all depends on saying yes to Jesus. 
That's the most important decision you'll ever make. Jesus, will you be my Lord? Will you save me from my sins? Make sure you turn to Jesus and ask him to forgive you. Make sure you put him in charge of your life so that he can make you the person you were created to be. The Bible is crystal clear about how we obtain eternal life. This is the message. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. You don't have to hope. You don't have to wait. You don't have to think. You don't have to say, I think, I'm pretty sure. You can know you have eternal life because you know Jesus Christ is my Lord. He lives in me. He guides me. He's forgiven me. The resurrection of Jesus is more than a big event in history. It's a turning point for every individual who gives themselves to him, who realizes that he's alive and invites him to come in. If you put your faith in him and confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Your relationship with Jesus def defines who you are. Your relationship with Jesus determines your eternal destiny. The person you are is formed by Christ in you. The place you'll spend eternity depends on your connection with him. If you're indifferent to Jesus, if you don't care, if you're rebellious, you won't listen, then you're separated from God. And you're in danger of that being permanent. You'll always be separated from him until you turn to Christ. But if you belong to him, you're part of the family of God. And you'll always be in that family. Make sure you've made an intentional choice to put Jesus on the throne of your life. Jesus is still calling out to every one of us, follow me, follow me. He's still forgiving sins. He's still showing purpose people their true purpose he's connecting people with his father and he's bringing them to his father's home and when you follow Jesus you come alive in your spirit even though we were dead because of our sins he gave us life even when he raised Christ from the dead for he raised us from the dead along with Christ we're not just celebrating one resurrection today we're celebrating billions. We're celebrating ours. Our sins keep us away from God so that we're spiritually dead. We're cut off from the source of life. And if we die in that condition, we won't be with God. But the Bible tells us forgiveness is real and it's within our reach. We can be right with God if we repent and trust in Christ. We will be sons and daughters of God in a family that never separates. We'll belong to him. We'll be with him forever. Christ rose to give us that life, that new life, that eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus has been celebrated every spring at this time of the year, every spring since it happened that day, every year. It's being celebrated in every nation on earth today. This is the holiday Christians look forward to. This is the day when everything changed. And we're grateful that God provided a way back to him through Christ. The Bible says we were buried in baptism just as Christ was buried in death. As Christ was raised from the dead by the great power of God, so we will have new life also. When we put someone in the water of baptism, we bury them in the water. It's a place of death. They don't want to be there very long. So a lot of times people ask me, how long are you going to keep me under? <laughs> I never have asked for a bribe. But, uh, <laughs> but we're in that place of death temporarily, and then out we come 
and life has changed. We're followers of Jesus, and he says to you and to me, I want you to have life the way I have it. I want you to share in my victory. I want you to live at my plane of life. We'll have guidance. We'll have resources. We'll fulfill God's purpose for creating us and putting us in his family. Through faith in Jesus, we're given power to break the chains of sin that tie us to destructive habits. We all have things that are easy for us to do that are not good. And the resurrection of Jesus means we don't have to keep those chains. We can break them. It, it can happen. It does. And we're given the power to step into God's will, to go forward, to accomplish the things that we could never do on our own. When God tells me to do something, it immediately becomes possible. It's immediately within my reach. Oh, I may have lessons to learn and steps to take. It may be a process that unfolds over time. But it's, a, it's possible now because he said to do it. When he told a lame man to get up, he could. When he told a blind man to look, he could. When he told Lazarus to come out of the tomb, he walked out. When he tells you and me to do something, we can. We can. The Bible says, I want you to know about the great and mighty power that God has given us followers. It is the same wonderful power he used when he raised Christ from the dead. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you and me. It's God. And he says, let's do stuff. Let's change this world. Let's love people. Let's make a difference. Let's bear fruit that lasts forever. So in the, the next seven weeks, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the main ways that we can grow closer to God. Some of the ways that we can accomplish his will as we rely on that resurrection power. And we'll see the pitfalls to avoid. The sins that, that hold us back and that take us down. And, and we'll have a, a look at helpful attitudes that we can cultivate, that we can nurture in order to become all we're meant to be. It's going to be good. It's going to be helpful. Pay attention to this scripture on the screen. It's a fairly long one, but it, it, it's an overview of what we'll be talking about and what Easter is really about. Would you follow along as I read it? Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth, for you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Since God shows you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts and always be thankful. Always. That last line is amazing. It's the key to an amazing life. It's how we stay close to God. It's how we escape the traps that try to take us down, the traps that ruin so many lives, some of them permanently. Always be thankful. Always. It's more possible than we think. And it makes a far greater difference than we realize. If we let God show us how to nurture that, cultivate that, 
We'll live the best life that can be. Going to talk about that. In the seven weeks ahead, I'll, I'll mention the seven deadly sins that historically have been talked about. And I asked myself, what's the opposite of this sin? What's the opposite of that sin? And you know what? Gratitude is the opposite of every one of them. This is the key. Norman Vincent Peale was looking out the window and had a new friend he was sitting at a coffee shop with. He said, it sure is a miserable day. And his friend said, I don't think so. I think it's a good day. And then he told him a story. He said, I was in a serious car accident. I woke up in the hospital and I heard a doctor standing above me say, this man is going to die. He'll never make it. I didn't want to die. I was only in my 40s. I had a wife. I had kids. I loved my work. He said, I lingered between life and death for days. And then one day I opened my eyes and I heard a doctor saying, this man is going to live. Believe it or not, he's going to make it. He said it was a gift. It was like God Almighty answering every prayer. He said all of a sudden food tasted so good. The sky lit up at night brilliantly. What a privilege it was to be near my wife and my kids. He said, I can't tell you how great it feels to have been relieved from a death sentence. Now I give thanks for life every day, even when it rains. He learned to always be thankful. There's easier ways to learn that aren't there? And yet, how many of you can relate? You've looked at death. You've wondered if you were going to make it. You may have seen a doctor shaking his head. And so many of you know what, exactly what he's talking about. But all of us can know what he meant when he said, I'm thankful every day. I'm thankful for the gift of life. I'm thankful for a God in heaven who cares about me. I hope we all will learn more about what it means to live a thankful life. When we remember the difference Jesus made by coming back from the grave, we have a reason to be grateful every day, all day long. I say let's do it. Anybody agree? Let's do it. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing. We're going to sing about what we came here to do. Here I am to worship.
You're my God. That's what we need to be able to say. That's the secret of life. Two weeks ago, we went to Michigan. My cousin died, Dr. Don. He was a chiropractor. And I thought about this story that I had uh, heard when I uh, was there for his funeral. Uh, a young doctor died suddenly, and his wife, was, of course, was smitten and sad, and, and yet not destroyed. She was, she was uh, just totally grieving, and yet not bitter. And a friend asked her, you seem like you still have peace. Why do you have peace? She said, let me show you something. And she took her down the hall to the waiting room that her husband had. And there was a sign hanging on the doorknob, a little bit crooked. And it said, I'm gone for a little bit. I'll see you soon. I'm gone for a little bit. I'll see you soon. And she believed it. She knew what it meant, but she also knew what it really meant. And that's the resurrection of Jesus. That's the difference it makes. That's the hope, the confidence that we live with. Whatever happens to me in terms of death, that's in a little bit. And if there's anything that people who are already in heaven still pray for, I believe it's that the people they love will join them there. So let's be there. Amen? I'm going to ask you to pray with me. I'm going to ask you, if you aren't sure if you've given your life to Christ, that you would ask him to come into your life right now. I'll lead in a prayer that you can pray in your own words, in your seat, and show you how it is that you can say to Jesus, be my Savior. It goes something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you came that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead to be my savior. I'm asking you today to forgive my sins, take away my guilt, and make me a child of God. I'm asking you today to take over my life and make me the person that I was created to be. Help me to follow you all my days. And if that's your prayer, you're a Christian. If that's your prayer, you're a child of God. If that's your prayer, you just signed up for an adventure that lasts forever. If that's your prayer, you just committed yourself to let go of some things and take hold of some things that are far better. And I hope you'll walk with Jesus this week. And Lord, help all of us to celebrate your resurrection by living in the power of the resurrection, by doing the things you've called us to do, by shedding the things you've called us away from, and being the people you've made us to be. Help us, Lord, to walk with you together and bring glory to your name, because you deserve it. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.